The surgical case presentation is titled Robotic Assisted Laparoscopic Resection of Rectovaginal Clear Cell Carcinoma Mass Arising from Endometriosis. Introduction. Throughout the literature, there is increasing evidence indicating a malignant transformation of ovarian and non-ovarian endometriosis into mainly endometrioid and clear cell carcinoma histologies. Patients with known or suspected history of endometriosis that present with suspicious symptoms such as change in bleeding patterns, physical exam findings, or imaging studies should be further evaluated to rule out malignancy. Here, we briefly review our patient's history and surgical case as cancer arising from endometriosis can be elusive. Methods. This is a surgical case report involving a single patient. The practice involves a single provider that has extensive experience in the treatment of endometriosis GYN oncology, and malignancy arising from endometriosis. We will review the surgical technique and why a robotic approach, if available, is preferred. Patient case. This is a 50-year-old G0 with long history of endometriosis that presented to our office two months, status post a robotic total laparoscopic hysterectomy, bilateral salpingoophorectomy, with vaginal bleeding. Procedure originally done at outside facility for pelvic mass with suspicion for malignancy. All records were reviewed, procedure was uncomplicated, pathology was benign. Patient had a GYN history significant for prior laparoscopic treatment of endometriosis. She also had a trial of oral birth control pills, GnRH agonists and antagonists without success. Besides endometriosis, she had a BMI of 45 and supraventricular tachycardia and currently was on a GRNRH antagonist as well as a tenolol. Physical exam done in our office was notable for friable tissue at the vaginal cuff and biopsy was performed. A solid mass was palpated at the vaginal cuff as well as on rectovaginal examination. Mass was non-tender and non-mobile. In-office sonogram images are displayed showing complex cystic lesion. Outside facility MRI showing a complex cystic and solid lesion at the vaginal cuff. Palmer's point was used to insulate the abdomen due to prior operative report noting significant adhesions. Upon entry into the abdomen, exploratory laparoscopy revealed no evidence of intraperitoneal metastasis. The surface of the diaphragm, liver, and stomach were completely normal. Pelvic washings were performed. The pelvis had evidence from recent surgery, status post hysterectomy, and BSO. However, rectosigmoid colon was severely attached to the back of the vagina and the bladder, as well as to the left pelvic sidewall. Before docking the robot, cystoscopy was performed. Bilateral ureteral catheters were then placed. Indocyanin green was placed in each catheter so that firefly method could be used to identify bilateral ureters during the surgery. Extensive adhesiolysis was performed. The rectosigmoid colon was mobilized. Care was taken to identify the ureter all the way from the pelvic brim to the back of the bladder. Firefly was used consistently to identify the ureter to avoid any damage. The right pelvic sidewall was then dissected, as well as the pararectal area, to identify the right ureter. Again, firefly method was used to avoid damage to the right ureter. The mass was identified below the uterosacral ligaments at the level of the litivator ani muscle. Frozen section of the mass was sent to pathology, which confirmed malignancy. The mass was then completely resected from the wall of the pelvis and off of the surface of the rectum. During extensive dissection, assistant performed retrovaginal examination and used EEA sizer to avoid injury. With the aid of the surgical assistants, partial vaginectomy was performed to remove the mass that was 
inside of the vaginal wall. Care was taken to remove areas of all diseased tissue to have adequate margins. All specimens that were removed were placed inside of a laparoscopic bag and removed from the vagina. Extensive vaginal irrigation was performed. Next, the ureter was identified and the vagina was repaired using a 2-0 V-lock suture in a running fashion. After completion of vaginal repair, cystoscopy was performed, adequate flow was noted from both ureters, and no injuries to the bladder. There was a suspicious lesion found on the vector sigmoid colon and was resected with the shaving technique as shown here. Upon further evaluation, there was a suspicious lesion found on the appendix and on the ileocecum, which was also resected. tolerated the procedure well with an estimated blood loss of 150 cc's. Pathology results were significant for the vaginal area and vaginal cuff with clear cell carcinoma with negative margins, the ileocecal area and appendix showing endometriosis and atypical glands that were suspicious for malignancy. Multidisciplinary planning recommended systemic chemotherapy with carbotaxol followed by whole pelvic and vaginal brachytherapy. Six months after patient's debulking surgery, she was seen in the office and was doing well with no evidence of disease. Management of patients with cancer arising from endometriosis can be challenging. Patients with endometriosis should be evaluated for malignancy with suspicious imaging findings. Optimal surgical reduction followed by adjuvant chemotherapy and or radiation is the current treatment recommendation. Robotic-assisted laparoscopy is feasible and may be preferable for debulking or resection of complex masses in the rectovaginal space, especially in obese patients.